Good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting uh, of Monday, January 6, 2014. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, this is a special meeting uh, for the Board of Selectmen. We're here to get some work done. There's a few items that were um, clogging our agenda that we wanted to knock out of the way. Um, on the agenda for tonight is we're going to hear an update from the 300th uh, sir, uh, committee. We're going to hear about the capital improvement plans financing from the uh, town accountant, and then we're going to go over the selectmen are going to discuss with their departments the um, uh, capital requests. Uh, there will be a few of the formalities that are dispensed with for this meeting, uh, but I'd like to now start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have a few standing, remain standing, please. Um, the uh, Governor, Dr. Paul Patrick, has ordered that the United States flag and the Commonwealth flag be lowered to half staff at all state buildings from sunrise until sunset on Thursday, December 19, 2013, in honor of special, Specialist Daniel Eckstein, who died on December 10th. This is also uh, from Deval Patrick in honor of Lance Corporal Matthew R. Rodriguez of Fairhaven, who died on December 11th, 2013, and also in honor of, in honor of Sergeant Daniel M. Vaseline uh, from Abington, who died on December 23rd, 2013. We just observe a moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. All right. Um, as I said, we're going to um, we're going to move right into the meeting here. Mr. Um, Chair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are going. We are going to dispense with uh, since it's a working meeting. We're going to uh, dispense with uh, public uh, input, and we're not going to have selectman updates unless there is something urgent from somebody that can't wait until Monday night. That would be good. So I had the honor of going to the um, awards banquet for our Littleton Football High School uh, championship team last night. Uh, they presented the Board of Selectmen this plaque in honor of their fantastic and outstanding season. They also gave a, a plaque to the police chief, fire chief, um, and I believe Sam Park, uh, he made a donation for some of the private buses that we rented. So um, if we could have Bill Colton possibly hang this in this room, that'd be great. Yeah, this is well, do. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. It's a great time. Great. Thanks, Jim. Yep. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to someone I'm really uh, looking forward to hearing from tonight, um, Mr. Jack Homer. Uh, welcome to, basically, your year. This is uh, 2014 and the year of the 300 celebration. So Thank you, Ted. And I would like everybody to rise and uh, pick up their mug. <laughs> It is non-alcoholic. Okay. <laughs> uh, sure. A toast uh, to the town of Littleton and its inhabitants. At this, the first selectmen's meeting of our 300th anniversary. May we mark and celebrate our 300th with the same enthusiasm that the founders of Littleton envisioned in 1714. And may we leave for generations to come a sense of pride in the past 300 and a renewed purpose for the town of Littleton in all the years to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Would you like to describe the other treat that was left for us as well? <laughs> no, no, you, that, that, I will, I will describe it. One, one of the things that the committee said right in the beginning was that there were only a couple of things in terms of memorabilia or other things that we were going to give away. One, 
F one of every piece of memorabilia was going to be given to the historical society. And anything that we put naturally in the time capsule would be also that. Everybody else has to pay. <laughs> so if, and I hope all of you want to keep your cups. Uh, yeah, yeah. They are ten dollars a piece. <laughs> they're ten dollars. They're ten dollars a piece. And and Keith, would you have the first one out? Would would you collect from everybody? Please? Sure, sure. <laughs> no. uh, this is a great salesman. <laughs> <laughs> this is an aside. The way you raise money. This is very successful. Here's your cup. Hand it over. Okay. If you want to keep it. If, if you want to keep it. it. Right. Yeah. And if I have to take any back, uh, never mind. <laughs> Um, no, what we want to do is just sort of give you a quick update. Everybody knows the dates, everybody knows what we're doing in terms of the events, go on the website and everything else. But there are a few things that, that need to be talked about. Certainly one is memorabilia and the other one is financing. financing let's take financing first. From the financing standpoint, we can't thank you enough for the $50,000, because that gave us the flexibility uh, of being able to talk to people, the small business owner, the Marin Pass stores in Littleton, that, that can't come up uh, immediately with $1,000 to buy a banner. So we can now go to them. The, we have a team. It's not a committee, so we, we, we have a, a team, uh, Deb and Joe and myself, we're going out and, and talking to these people, but this gives us the, you know, the, the ability to talk to them and say, look, a banner costs a thousand dollars. Maybe if it's not on the on the parade route, we can reduce that slightly or something like that. But we can now go and say, if you can give us two hundred dollars up front, because that's what it costs. It, the, the banners, very honestly, cost us around $170, yeah. $168, $170, a dollars Littleton Electric Department is, is doing all the, you know, the, the, the work on them. So, basically, what we're, we're saying now is, look, if you can give us 200 now, 200 in April, 200 we don't care when it comes in next year. But this gives us the ability, and that's what we're using the, the, the 50000 for. And it is and it is absolutely great. It, it, it is fantastic. Let me just remind you. Yeah, go ahead. The fifty thousand came from the town, not from the board of selectmen. That, that, the body was great enough to find it. So you, uh, our your thanks to us is actually to the entire town. It, to to the whole town, the finance committee, the body, to to everybody. Yeah. Certainly, yes. But your support was right. was okay. very 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 important. So from that standpoint, we are having, you know, financial, you know, the ability to to go and, and raise. Money is tough uh, today. It's 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 not easy, uh, you know. Uh, but I think we we have some some real good things. Some some people are coming out of the woodwork, basically with some some things. Joe came up with one, and I don't want to get involved in specifics. Cause we're still talking to them, but we're we're given, you know, we want to be able to to give the businesses the bang for the buck. In other words, we are going to come out with. Two, two brochures, one in March that will be distributed through the electric, the, your electric light bills, and uh, one in March that will give a, a quick overview and name all the, the donors that we have up to that point. Then there will be one coming out just before the parade and the fireworks, which is the big event, the, the September 6th event. The, that will be, be coming out probably in the August, but it will be the July bills, but it will come out in August. From the electric light department, and they will that will have everything on it that that we have. We we are looking for, and we think we have them. We five twenty thousand dollar plus uh, donors. That's the key. That's 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 the key. that's the key. We we think we have them. Uh, we've got to work. We still have to do a little more work on them. Okay. Uh, sometimes you have to back away a little bit and, and come back. So uh, we think we're we think we're in very good shape from the financing, but but that is naturally one of the the, the biggest things we have. Uh, and has anybody got any questions relative to financing? Uh, that's you know, I'll be glad to answer anything that I can. Uh, memorabilia is the other thing, and you see it here. These are the first, probably the first times you've seen the cups that we that we've had. We have made an arrangement with My Town Sports 
My Town Sports, which is right next to the post office between the Baptist Church and the, and the post office. And they are going to handle our memorabilia. This is great because we are all volunteers. And we at first were talking about the Dunn Building, which is at the corner of Adams and uh, Stephen Street, uh, and, and doing that. We're still going to use that, but only as a facade. Uh, we're only going to put a, a banner up in it. We're going to put memorabilia in the windows and things like that. Uh, we, we got involved in all sorts of insurance things and, and everything else. So that's all we're going to do. We will only go into that building when John Dunn is with us, which is fine. And, and put up banners and, and put up the various things we do. Because that's a great spot. Everybody coming down Stadium Street stops there, they're going to see it. It's a, it's a, it's a real great spot. Uh, from the memorabilia standpoint, uh, we're going to do anything that has our logo on it will be done through the friends of, of, of uh, the 300. They are going to they're going to handle that, which is which is which is great. Uh, anything that are strictly banners, the the fans and the various things you see, uh, that is strictly my town sports. We will help them with the marketing. but that is strictly theirs. They will provide that inventory as. In, in opposition to what we're providing in, in terms of the memorabilia. They will do all that and take, take care of that. And we have, we'll come up with a couple new things, and nobody else has seen them because I just picked these up today. But these are, these are flags that we will be involved with. But this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is, a, this is a flag that you can see with the with thing. And then the, the small... In, then the small flags that will be in statues that you can put on the, the lawn and things like that. There was one thing that I have been asked to do by a few people, and that is they would like to have the seal of the town of Littleton on flags. Now that's over and above, that's beyond us. And I would like your input into if you would like us to mark it, uh, to have available the flag, the uh, the seal, the blue seal. Uh, I I'm sorry, I don't have one. Yeah. We all know what it is. The the blue seal on flags similar to this. And that would be up to up to you people, not not us. This is ours. That that would be up to you people to produce and and sell. You're right. Hmm. All right. Well, um, if you can give us some information on it. You know what the cost is. I don't know. I'd, I'd hate to. The, the cost wouldn't be anything, anything to the town. Oh, okay. We would we would handle just as we're handling okay. handling this. It will be all. Most of it is going to be by order. Okay. And in other words, we are going to say you know this, these flags are available, uh, and if you want them, they're going to be delivered April fifteenth. I'll just use, okay. uh, use a date. You have to order them by April first. Okay and pay for them by April 1st. So that there is no inventory inventory okay. problem. Yeah. But I, you know, it's not a call to, to use the, 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 oh. the, that. And that's what I'm looking for the, the selectmen to say, fine, we, we can do that and give us authority to do it. If you have trademark rights or your... Uh, uh, whatever, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever, I don't know. Keith may know more about yeah. what we have to do in that. But. Yeah. So yes, I don't see problem. Problem. Yeah. So yes, yeah, yeah. the selectmen yeah. can exactly do it. You could probably do it even if you didn't ask them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So feel free. If okay. anybody wants it. it, then okay. Thank you. Talk to Jay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you know, those are the two areas. Now we're we're open to questions. Uh, you know, I've got a bunch of the members here. Uh, we're open to questions. Uh, whatever you whatever you might have to to ask us. What's going on? Yeah. Um, there's one thing I've, I've been impressed with is the number of people that are coming out that you see, you'll see little emails or posts or something from people, well, well I didn't even know they were involved. Um, so I think there's a lot of people coming out of the woodwork to help out with this, and I think it's going to make it a great event. But if the, um, if the members of the committee want to stand up for recognition and identify themselves, say maybe say what subcommittee they were on so that people might know who to get in touch with if, they're in, if they'd like to do anything. So, Great, Robin. Why don't you why don't you start? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, Robin, you understand. Go ahead. Twenty years in front of a bunch of second graders, you, you can stand up here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Robin Sewell. I'm looking for help for the picnic. <laughs> if you'd like to come down and help with that? That's on July 12th. I'm on the general committee. I'm on the picnic committee. I'm on community outreach um, and publicity. Very good. Thanks.
How Millie? They, how do they get in touch with you, Robin? Uh, I'm in the phone book. They okay. can. You can always call the. Uh, go to the email. Um, you can contact us on the website. Um, we're we're all interactive, so you know, they come in and our person that's in charge of <coughs> ferreting out to the right person will get it to us. So. Millie. Hi, I'm Millie McGovern, and I'm on the original committee, and I am in charge of the, of the liaison for the parade committee. Okay. So, any questions? <laughs> I know, I've been hearing a lot of good things about the parade. Yeah, That's going to be a heck of a day. I've had questions about antique vehicles, and <coughs> if people want to, um, I think it's Badger. David Badger is the antique vehicle contact, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. We have a lot of surprises on it. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Ann? Uh, Ann Himmelberger, I'm sort of a, an ally on the um, uh, committee. I am actually representing the uh, historical society that started quite a few years ago to start working on the history of Littleton, and we have a very um, enthusiastic, talented group of people, and we are pretty much on target to get the book uh, ready and uh, to sell later in the summer. And I uh, hope you're all going to sign up for a copy. <laughs> Thanks, Ann. Mary. Uh, Mary Dugan, I'm on the 300th committee. Um, I'm also the picnic and work with Robin on community outreach. So if you have any picnic questions, <laughs> we're looking for great sunny weather. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the original committee. Now we have a couple subcommittees here. First of all, Sue Cummings from the Legacy Committee. Yeah, I'm the chairperson of the Legacy Committee and starting in the spring we're going to be doing we're going to do, you're going to see some changes around town. We're working on some Welcome to Littleton things and that type of thing. We're working on the Common. I'm also the president of the, of the Garden Club, and so we're working together on some big projects. So the town's in a little bit. And Diane Crory on the opening and closing committee? Yeah, so uh, Diane Crory, opening, closing, and also um, the time capsule. Um, so we're kind of working with some of the schools, trying to get some. Um, essays from the schools so that um, if we look back uh, 50 years ago, um, we did the contest back then and we had four winners and so we're looking to do the same type of thing this year. Also, if anybody has any suggestions of what should go into our time capsule for this year, we'd be happy to accept um, the suggestion or an article that you're hoping to put in there. Um, one thing we have decided not to do this year is we're not going to bury it. <coughs> There's been some issues, so we are going to um, put it in a safe location where it can be seen at all times, and the only thing you won't be able to see is actually what's inside of it. Thanks, Diane. And John, do you, from the Parade Committee, if I... John Borowski, Temporary Chair of the Parade Committee. Uh, we've invited about uh, 80 different units of, of different types to, to come into the parade. We've got about half of them signed up, and we're, we're still getting them to come, to come back. So we've got we we'll put out a good parade for it at the town. A lot of people ask the route. Can you just clarify the route for the record? The route is basically from St. Anne's Littleton High School area to IBM, straight down King Street. Reverse from the Memorial Day. Right. Yeah. That's what you reverse. Yeah. 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 We're using two areas to stage. One is the St. Anne's parking lot and, and then the high school driveway to okay. stage the, the parade. And the reviewing stand and all the, the, uh, the stage, I guess. The Baptist Church in, in that area. Right by the common area. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. I have a good question. Say. So with respect to the memorabilia, do you have on your Facebook page advertising for that and perhaps even a PayPal button to link to? We will have all the all the necessary links for you to go and buy and do it. And uh, using my town uh, sports, it's it's great because it's credit card, every everything else. They're going to handle all that for us. It's uh, you know for a bunch of volunteers to get that load off our back is 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 fantastic, and to get it with someone who has the facilities to do all that, and they're going to you know they're going to uh, allocate <coughs> space just to Littleton memorabilia, and we're gonna, we may add more things. Uh, we we said. Uh, we're still working on golf shirts and, and hats and things like that. So that we, that we will be adding, adding to. 
But you can get those things right now. Just okay. stop in the store. You can get your mugs. You can get your fleece blankets. You can get They've uh, got their mugs. T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> they want a set. <laughs> Jack, we also have two other people for the parade committee. Oh, okay. the deputy chief. Okay, go ahead. Right. Matt King is on the parade committee. And then Ch Ch Chief Wodzinski, he's on the, on the parade committee also. So don't need to hear anything from us. It's going to be an interesting day. We're splitting the town in half and shutting <laughs> off most of the 495 off ramps and on ramps. So it's going to be quite an interesting day. Yeah, it, there's a, some logistical issues we have to work out. We'll be staging uh, crews on both sides, ambulance saws on both sides of the town and in different areas. So we've got, uh, we've got a good working uh, group going with police and fire. So we'll be fine. Any other questions? Just one more thing. You had mentioned um, the financing part and how, how big it actually is and how important it is. Mm -hmm. We're trying to contact as many businesses as possible, but if there's anyone out there that knows a business person who <coughs> wants to contact us, let us know because we do make phone calls, but we also work all day too. So to get all this done, <clears throat> I know there's an awful lot of businesses that haven't been contacted. So <coughs> if they want to contact us, please do so. We'll set up an appointment and we'll come to you and meet with you. Yeah, the, go ahead, John. Uh, excuse me, I don't mean... No, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> I should have mentioned a couple of the big units that we've got coming. One of them is a contingent of the members from Philadelphia is coming up. Uh, they actually put off <coughs> put in there. there. It's a day that they have their, their contest. Big, you know, the whole unit down there has their contest. They asked to, to come up to our parade, so I think that's pretty good. We also have the Davy Band, the Northeast Davy Band coming, too. Uh, and there's a couple other big ones. We got uh, Scott, what's your, the other one? The firemen? Um, we get the um, State Police Bagpipe Band, Police, yeah. uh, the Boston Fire Brigade, yeah. uh, Boston Worcester Pipe Band. Uh, um, yeah, we've got a lot of, a lot of militia units from around the area too to be there. We've got a lot of folks from in, in town people too. And that's really what we're looking for is for people and organizations in town that want to put a float in the parade. It would be nice to have to advertise, you know, their, their, their uh, non-profit organization or whatever. There's and also they, the possibility of a Littleton, Colorado sending their uh, high school band. Yeah, that's Which true. they said they'd only send a third out, which is 200 people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get in touch with all the Littletons in the United States and see if they can send somebody. Deputy Chief, how early can we start setting out our chairs? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's shelter is a little bit limited, like two days before. Well, the, I, I don't know, they seem to violate that this year. <laughs> my sister and brother in law had theirs out a week ahead of time. Right <laughs> all right. That's all I have. Anybody else? Okay. Actually, the select one will be on the viewing stand, so you don't have to worry about the Oh, chair. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Um, I know we talked in depth about Bonnie going next. Jim, do you have to get out of here for anything? Do you need to go? I didn't know if you had. Okay. You know, with cold people, weather coming. People yeah, people taking care of things. Great. What's that? You're the guy to pay. Oh, yeah, for the. Oh, everyone's paying for their. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Hey, all here. We're going to shut the camera off during this part of the program. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Look at that. Look at that. Thank you. What is coming? Thank you. All right. With that, we can go to uh, Bonnie. Uh, you have a presentation. We've been talking a lot about. Um, capital improvements and financing and the big item right now is the uh, obviously the fire station design and the construction uh, there's uh, a goal to try to do this all within the levy limit uh, there's timetables that are out there and this is a discussion about I think capital improvements financing mainly and it just so happens that the fire station is what we perceive as the next big possibility here so um, basically what I was asked to do is take a look at the current debt service schedule that we have in place now uh, for the next 20 years um, and try and figure out you know if if there is an opportunity to fit something the size of like the fire station that we're, we're currently discussing about a seven million dollar project inside the levy limit rather than doing a debt exclusion override so in looking at the debt service schedule um, there is going to be an opportunity arising 
to place some significant debt in fiscal year 20. And you can see from the graph up there, that's, there's a big drop down from that point. Um, so what I did was uh, I met with the treasurer, Stephen Udy, and we've looked at this exhaustively um, to try and figure out how that can be managed and you know when design would be done and when debt could be placed. Um, so to back up from that fiscal year, and, and just to give you an idea of what's going on in that year, that's when the Shaker Lane um, debt service is fully paid off. Um, and in 2023 is when the high school debt service is fully paid off, and those are both the larger pieces of debt inside the levy. So again, in backing up from fiscal 20, when there is some relief, um, we see that we could do um, construction in fiscal 17 if we ask the town to authorize construction in 17 and design in fiscal 16. Um, or I'm sorry, design in May of 16, which is fiscal 17, and construction in May of 17. Um, and allowing us to, if you look at that, we really don't exceed by you know, by too much, um, except for fiscal 21, um, the level that we're at now, which is about 900000 in debt service payments inside the levy limit. So that allows us to kind of maintain level status. Uh, it doesn't allow that debt service. We don't allow the debt service that's rolling off to go into operating budgets anyway by policy, but it provides some, some level um, appropriation. If we did it earlier than that, um, say, you know, we authorized it a year earlier. You can see in fiscal 19, um, the debt service spikes up quite a bit. Um, what that would do is we'd have to pay that out of the operating budget. So we'd have to find some relief somewhere else. Um, another department budget, other, other programs, we, we'd have to fund that debt service. Um, and that would equate to a reduction. Um, I think we also bumped it up to fiscal 14. And you can see there are a few years where we're over that $900,000 level that we're currently at. Um, so the impact would be exacerbated further. Um, so really, fiscal 20 is the year that I have the relief in. So I can't program it inside the levy limit without a debt exclusion override vote uh, until I place that debt service in 20. So fiscal 17, or May of 2016, is the earliest that you could secure a vote for design with the following year, you'd authorize the construction in May of 17. That's the earliest we can do it inside the levy limit without paying that, which for people watching who may not understand this is no override. This Correct. is all inside the levy limit. This is within not, the existing we, operating budget. No increase in taxes. Fine. Does this analysis also presume that we're not buying anything else during this time? It does presume that there is no other debt service placed at this time, that we are not authorizing any other new debt that isn't revenue dedicated. So it wouldn't count CPC funded debt because that's funded by CPC um, surcharge amounts or the cell tower debt if that were, you know, if there were additional cell tower projects authorized. Um, just inside the levy yes. So that also uh, further presumes that there would be no school construction, no library construction, no COA, it would preclude that this is the only thing for borrow. It would preclude that from coming inside the lesson. Right. Yeah. Now, all right. Yeah. Bonnie also had updated some figures to show what our what our total borrowing is. The um, you want to walk us through? Sure. This? The, the bottom, the red section, is the um, debt service that's authorized and, and currently placed inside the levy. The green is the debt service that is currently authorized and placed outside the levy. So you can see we, we have much more debt outside the levy limit or, or exclusion votes, which would include the police station, the Russell Street School, the middle school. Um, and those were fairly recent projects. So that's why that level is so high. Um, and the blue is the assumption on new debt placed for the fire station. Yeah. Assuming the 2016 uh, scenario. And you also showed us what 2015 looks like in 2014. But the key is that right right now, folks are paying what they're paying in their tax bills is the is the total. They're paying the the red and the green total. Right, right. Three million dollars worth is what is what we pay. But that total amount will be going down uh, over the over the coming years. Right. You ready to kick me in the shits? Okay. So he went from 2016 and went back two years. 
what happens if, if you look at all? At how, I know we don't have the graphs here. If you look at all about pushing it out a couple of years, uh, another year, I just see everything goes down. You know, 19 and 20 things go down even more. Is there? Um, you know, did you look at that as a, a way to, or what the effect that would be? I, what I looked at is what is the earliest okay. that we could do this. Early. Obviously, okay. going later is going to—it's going to ease into that scenario. Yeah. Okay. Better. Um, but we could do it inside the levy fully without any other required votes of town meeting and fiscal. We could start in May of 2016. So the next step is um, we can get to this in a second. I just want to say before, but it's finding out the operational impact of waiting till 20. Um, the yeah, well, I just want to get that point out that that's what I hope you're prepared to talk about. And um, but before that, let's just see if the board has any questions. Well, in this presumption, you know, we're funding it within the levy limit. Okay. Um, I have a couple of questions related to that. What other major capital projects have we funded within the levy limit? Recently, um, we have not done any borrowings inside the levy limit um, for long term. We've done a couple of short term projects inside the levy limit. Um, one of them is the track. Um, that was voted as a debt exclusion. <coughs> However, in managing the, the finances and having some additional appropriations available, like from snow and ice money that was not spent, we were able to pull that inside the levy limit and not place it for long-term debt. Um, the Russell Street School, we had a small portion of design service for that that we were able to fund inside the levy limit. So this, this makes the presumption that should we decide that we want to build a fire station within the levy limit, that every other capital project now becomes one that's outside the levy. Until fiscal 24, there's a little bit of relief um, because that's when the high school debt falls off. Um, so there might be a small project that could be funded inside the levy if we're going to maintain that 900,000. And how many, in, in the long-term capital plan, how many major capital projects do we have in view or? Um, there is discussion on the library. Um, regarding a new facility or rehab of the existing facility, but nothing has been definitively discussed at this point, but it, it's out there. Um, there are some um, improvements to the Shaker Lane School that may be significant. Um, one, one part of that is the roof. Um, the facility study has also identified some major improvements in, in up, outward fiscal years um, that may need to be looked at in, as far as financing. Um, but the two that I can think of, you know, off the top of my head, the library and the Shaker Lane School. How old are you past 24? In the next 10 years. Okay. So, then if, if one of these other projects, like the library or repairs to the school or whatever it is, a you know, place for park and rec, you know, there's, there's a whole right. long list of people that would like to make uh, facility improvements. Would they then, um, by virtue of this, would we be saying that they would have to come after the fire station, or would we say, no, if you want to come in and go for debt exclusion, we would consider this beforehand? Um, what I'm saying is that in fiscal 20, we have the opportunity to finance something inside the levy limit. Um, and I, the fire station was the project that was discussed as being maybe the next big project. But again, that's, that's what you use that's, as an example here. Because that's example. the one that we see yes. as, the, as the next one. Um, but but it's, a, it's a policy choice. That, I mean, the, the, question, the, the answer to the question is it's a policy choice. So if, you, if, if you've only got X amount of borrowing authority within the levy limit and you use it all for, for, one, for one project, then every other project either it awaits your ability to fund it within the levy limit, which is later beyond 2024, yeah, 2024 or it's done via a, uh, a debt exclusion. Yeah. Uh, we've got so many, what's that? Right, we've, yeah. got so, we've got so many things to do. I think the important thing to look at is that um, what I think was started by Jim here was to start this analysis of looking at, look, let's, let's do the smart, let's see what's coming off. Let's not just go ahead and compound our debt now. And start piling on is to say let's let's look at this and, and that's the project right now that we have. Um, well, I think I think you know my line of questioning it comes down to well are we uh, are we getting ourselves into a jam because we're pushing off 
a lot of needed capital programs. We've identified this as, uh, or we seem to have identified this as a priority uh, that needs to be done, and um, we've sort of uh, hemmed it in with the idea that we're going to do it within the levy limit, and you know maybe the discussion ought to be a little more broad based. And, and you know how do we want to fund it, um, and how that does impact the rest of the town and the rest of the, the projects that come up? Because what I see is conflict. Uh, people that are saying, oh, well, our project won't be considered for years and years and years, and they're all needed projects. We should we should be tackling them one by one, and we end up in a situation where we're doing them all, and when we're putting off <coughs> spending the money now, only to spend twice as much later. That's not true. Though. Yeah, I don't get that. Don't spend that money, spend twice later. Yeah. Can you explain that? Not only that, but you, well, we're talking about spending, doing a project that's been on the forefront for the past three years, four years, uh, and now with the, the increase in staff even brought it to the forefront, even closer to the front burner. No pun intended. Um, what we're trying to do here is to, to, to not, number one, go up on our tax base, you know, ask the taxpayers to increase their tax bills every year. We have the ability to do it inside the levy, so we don't increase taxes. If there is any contingent in town that wants to come before this board and say, I have a project that I'm near and dear to, and go through the process of getting a Prop 2.5 override to get that project complete, and this board and the townspeople support it, it's going to happen. So we're not restricting anybody from coming forward. I, we're not telling anybody don't come forward. I, I think telling them is, that you're not raising wait a minute, wait a minute. He's talking What we're Alex. saying is we have a project that has to be done. We ask, can it be done within the tax levy, the money that's collected out of all our taxes? I got my tax bill. I don't like it. I don't want it going up anymore. Bonnie comes back and says, here are the options. Here's the soonest we can do it within the, the levy, within our means, within our budget, within the money we collect from everybody in this town. Here's how we can do it without going up on taxes. Again, anybody that wants to come before this board, any organization that wants to come before this board, and then go before the townspeople and say, I want my project done. Here's how much it's going to cost. Here's how much the Prop 2.5 override is going to be. And the townspeople say, we agree. We say yes at town meeting. It's going to go forward. But in essence, what you're saying is that this is our project. And the rest is somebody else's. No, problem. Alex, no, I started no, this by saying. If you, if, uh, let me finish am, my point. I thought you would. Um, if, if, we, if we focus on this and doing it um, within the levy limit, that, that's great. But we have all these other important things that are coming along. And to say, well, we can build a fire station, won't increase the taxes. Um, we're not going to increase your taxes. That's not a. And that's not really a correct statement because we know we're going to have to do something for the library. We know we're going to have to do something for other people. Yes, let's, let's, and so let's not give people the false sense that this isn't going to cost. No, it is. We're not, giving, no them that. We're not giving them the false sense that this is not going to cost. What we're doing is we have, we have coming down the pike, the pipe, whatever you want to call it, we have significant capital projects. So far, I've heard fire station, I've heard shaker lane, I've heard library, and then there's also been talks about uh, COA and park and rec. Right now, the one that is and right in front of us that seems to be the highest priority is the fire station. This is, and that's what was used in this example. Bonnie. Maybe to allay Alex's concerns a little bit, is there anybody else, any other department coming down saying, we need something built today, we need, this is our project that we want it, we want financed? The only project that I know of that is in process and in discussion is the library. I have talked to the library director, and he said they're actively flushing it out, um, but they, they're not sure what year it's going to fall into. I, I'm sure the request will fall in the next five years, but I don't know where. But he hasn't come to your office every day. He's trying to say, hey, no. let's, well, how does this affect the library? No, they are going like through the study phase right now, and, and they will come back. They have a lot of things to look at, so they have to look at whether they're going to stay in the same building, they're going to rehab, whether they're going to look for another building. And so there's a lot of steps to take that the fire station has already taken to get to that point. What, what may be helpful is to identify, and, and I, I have the figures available, 
the next issue of debt that could be made, maybe the next significant amount. So in fiscal 2024, um, I, you know, I said in fiscal 20 we could issue about $7 million in debt. In fiscal 24, we could issue about $3 million in debt over 20 years with the assumptions of the same rates as today. Um, I also took a look at excluded debt. So if you, we used the fiscal 2012 debt exclusion limit as the threshold for pain. That's when everything hit. That's when the police station hit, the Russell Street School debt hit. That's when the bills, you know, went up significantly this year. So using that as the level, when's the next point that you could issue, like, a fire station? <coughs> um, that would be fiscal 24. So the debt service that we issued back in 2008 doesn't decline enough until 24 to do another significant project. Um, so really, fiscal 24 is, would be the next date that something could be looked at. Um, on uh, December 5th, we were given a memo by you where you outlined three options. It appears to me that this memo and the documents for tonight relate to just option number three. Would you be willing to share your analysis on options one and two as well? Sure. What I, what I did in those options was try to provide some uh, measure of combination of inside and outside the debt, the debt, I'm sorry, the levy limit for debt service. Um, I would just preface that those whole scenarios with that they require, they assume that a future town meeting will vote in the way that I want them to. And those are some strong assumptions. I, I can't predict what a future vote of town meeting is going to do. Um, it assumes that debt service um, reductions that are rolling off now, um, 80000 a year or some odd, um, would be allocated into the capital stabilization fund and saved and then used in a future year to fund the debt service on the fire station when issued to kind of mitigate um, the process. Um, it also makes some assumptions that we might have a little bit of snow and ice money remaining um, and that the future town meeting would vote to put that into the capital stabilization. While that might be likely, it's, it's something that I just I can't predict mm -hmm. definitively whether a town meeting would do that. Um, so if all of those things went into play, you may be able to authorize the debt earlier and we would work diligently to keep that inside the levy limit however we would need a debt service uh, a debt exclusion vote in case we couldn't in case something happened snow and ice was ridiculous for the next you know five years and we spent more than we had budgeted and um, we would need to secure that debt exclusion override vote which would mean that there's the possibility that in, a, in any given year that there would be a, an amount above what we're paying now on the exclusion portion of the tax bill. Um, again, the goal was to try and keep it all in, um, but you'd still need to have the vote otherwise. Um, the but fiscal that's exactly what we did with the track. That's exactly what we did with the track. This presentation to you tonight does not require a debt exclusion only vote. So there would be no ballot vote required to, to affect this. Um, and the earliest that we could do that would be fiscal or May of 2016. So, does that, do you want me to get into it a little more? Uh, no, um, I think that it probably makes sense for us to have um, Chief Kuczynski give us an idea of what waiting till 2024 would be like for, for services in town. Yeah, I just want to say for right now, I think, just want to address Alex's concerns a little bit. This isn't like taking uh, a, a portion of the I mean, maybe just taking a portion of it, but it doesn't mean anybody else isn't getting funded. Um, this is doing something diligent. This is a good, strong plan, not piling on the debt. And, um, you know, we have these plans, and, you know, something will have to go outside the levy limit at some point, it sounds like, if we have a couple more major projects coming down. So what we're doing here is we're trying to get things inside the levy limit, not increasing taxes. The other option would be to take this outside the levy limit, increase taxes now, when we really don't have to, and then reserve this for a project that may or may not happen in the future that will have all this uh, stuff, all this, uh, these funds sitting inside the levy limit. And if you have funds sitting inside the levy limit for a couple of years, they could get pulled out and get put into uh, you know, a cap plan or something else, and then they wouldn't be there when we wanted to build something. So I think using the money when we have it for projects that we have uh, seems to be pretty sound um, fiscal planning. I, so. think, I think part of my point was, and perhaps I didn't make that clear, is that we're pushing this all back a little ways. And as we push back and we make the assumption, well, this is, our, this is our planning priority. I think everybody has said, you know, I don't think anybody's disagreeing that we have to do something about the fire station. Um, 
but if we push it back to that far down the road, then my concern is aren't we naturally pushing everybody back that far down the road? Um, and, and whether we're at, in the long term actually harming ourselves, because each one of these projects we push back, we all know what his, history tells us, the price goes way the heck up. And, and we're paying more, we're gonna, well, undoubtedly we'll pay more in interest, we'll undoubtedly pay more in construction costs, and all those things. I think what the discussion has to happen is that, all right, we've, we've said this is important, but we really need to hear about what those other projects are that we need to, to calculate into this, and then decide whether we want to start with something now, start with something later, but you just brought up a point that, that works. Maybe, maybe we start with this under the assumption we might have, when, you know, under one of Bonnie's models, that we might have the ability to offset the initial design costs or something like that, um, and start to look at that further point out when the library or other projects will be much closer to something we're going to actually have tangible numbers on. There's no one here but the fire department. Yeah. I mean, that's the There's no one, line. I think Bonnie made the point. There's no one banging down the no door one now. banging down the doors. The I fire think the department's is, here. If, if I can, I've been quiet this whole time. Towards the, the, the town has stepped up as a town, as a, as a board in general, to get things done that needed to get done in the in not too far past. It wasn't too long ago so we didn't have any of this. So when things have arrived, on the scene that has to be done, then the town did it. And not just the bull, but the town got together and, and, and said we needed a police station, we needed the track, we needed repairs done at the school system. And I think the same thing would happen right now. I think what you have here is a plan that's, that's responsible, but it doesn't preclude that something's not going to come up in the future that we do have to build or maintain something in, uh, in the future. This is just a plan that if we a plan to try to keep the taxes down and try to do it in the, in the, in the plan process. But once mm -hmm. again, along the way, if something pops up that needs to be done, it'll get, it'll mm -hmm. get done. And maybe mm -hmm. at that point, taxes will have to go up. But Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's as simple as spending within your means. That's the bottom line. My, my only concern is that if the fire department is funded inside the levy, then there might be a mindset of, well, I don't want to buy a library because that's outside the levy. Like, this was a bargain because it was inside the levy, but anything else would be seen as being extra and additional and excessive, and perhaps people would feel reluctant to vote in for those things because this came inside. Well, I think it's hard to gauge. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's something that we should, something to consider. Um, but I also, I don't know, it's hard to gauge. You know, you can't, they can't speak for every voter, but... Um, Hard to gauge. I don't know if anybody says I don't want something because we just. Yeah, you know, I guess there might be that. In, I don't want something. We just pay, we're still paying for that. Darn this, you know. Yeah. Why, how can we afford anything else? I, I mean, guess, that's yeah. that's a it's a it's a great point. But how do you know? I mean, if you had the little crystal ball to be able to say that that will or will not work, um, pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just keep it for really special occasions. But, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, it's a it's a good valid point. But you know, it's it's tough to sit here and. Think about the future, and and we and we have a, say yes, it would or no, it wouldn't. You know? And there's, to, there's so many impacts. I mean, there's going to be you know, eight years it could be a totally different board, sure. could, you know, totally different town, totally different dynamic. So it, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's it's something to think about. But I think we're doing the I think we're doing the right thing right now. I think I, I, chief. yeah, I do yeah. want to get. I have one question for Bonnie before we get to the chief. Okay, and it's going to help us look at your question. What's the move-in date on on this? So what's his date to move in approximately? Um. Because we talk all about financing and things, but when, when does he get to move in? I had, let's see, yeah, May 2020 would be fiscal, 19, fiscal. fiscal May of 19 is when I place the debt service, so the project must be completed by then. Okay. It can be completed before then, um, but I need to place the debt service by, by May. Okay, 19. five and a half years in the current situation. Take us down that road. So currently, um, on a yearly basis, we pay six grand uh, in rental for the trailer. Um, a couple of things that we'll need to look into uh, if we decide to put the project off a bit more. Uh, one will be the roof for the rear station. Um, originally, there was uh, 50 grand set aside for that. Um, there was some uh, issues with uh, with getting that done. Um, so that would that would need to uh, come back up to uh, to be addressed, uh, as well as. Um, with, with there's some door issues 
Um, but depending on when it falls, we could, you know, potentially make things stretch or they may need to be repaired. So, I mean, in the long run, um, I'm more concerned about, I know you're talking finance, so I'm more concerned operationally. Yeah, I mean, so, so operationally, I mean, as we, uh, you know, as we move forward, um, currently we have the around the clock coverage there in the trailer. That's limited at two. If we need to, um, if we're lucky enough to get the grant or, or expand on our staffing, We'll, we'll need another uh, another trailer for some additional space. But um, uh, moving forward with that, one of the concerns with the project, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but as we move up for every two years, it's just under a million dollars of an increased cost um, with the rate of inflation. For the building? For the, for the new construction. Um, that was, and speaking with Corel, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, it's an unknown. Yeah, talking, I mean, one eighth. You're talking really yeah, 12 percent. Right. 12 goes up 12 percent a year. Um, they were estimating about seven. Yeah. Um, okay. So, from year to year. Okay. So that would be you know increased costs. Um, that would also be um, something to you know I, I guess monitor. Yeah, exactly. That'll be in your uh, your ball field there with the uh, the levy limits and stuff. Um, you know, so as far as uh, that, I mean, we'll continue to keep plugging away and selling the project. But it, you know, as far as other challenges within the facility, we'll continue to you know live within our means. Um, there's nothing major that's going to require us to uh, you know so go outside of our trailer. The five years. I mean, the, can you live the way you're living right now and service this town? With the amount of um, folks you have for the next five years and the conditions you have. That's as long as our staffing doesn't expand at all, then we'll, you know, we'll maintain it in the facility that we have. Um, that's not our goal. Our goal is to increase our staffing to better serve the community. Discussion for another day. I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> I guess, and I, like I said, I, it's all about safety. I mean, living with your, in your means, if that's going to put anything, any, make anything less safe. I mean, you know what's going on in town with the growth and things like that. I Absolutely. Mean, um, so I mean, we need some. You know, uh, we're, 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 we, we're this the project. Falling, but I want a real. This project story. has uh, been somewhat in the works for God over the last ten years. Um, actually, it started when Chief Kelly began uh, the police station. Um, there was preliminary design for a fire station down there. So this has been going on for quite a few years now. Um, our currently. For our fire apparatus, we have to custom design apparatus to fit in the building. Um, that's a concern. That costs us money. Uh, in the next three years, we have next year we're going for a new rescue pump. The year after that, we're going for a new ladder truck. Um, that ladder truck's going to be 30 years old. So we need the appropriate facility to house this equipment. Um, so that requires space. Where spaces are at a premium right now. And you have to do uh, that for the that. new ambulances. That's why we had to put the addition on just to just to house the ambulances to fit them in the building. Um, so uh, you know that all comes at a cost. So we and continuously that cost is done now. With that, you can fit your two new ambulances there in our building with yep. the new doors and everything. And what about the new ladder trucks? I mean, that much, are they that much bigger, taller, wider than the current ladder they're, trucks? They're bigger. Uh -huh. They are all bigger. Will they fit out in and on our doors? Your doors? They should. Okay. Right. So there shouldn't be too much custom market. Right. right. Okay. I guess the other concern is I don't want to put on a roof and tear down a fifty thousand dollar roof in five years. If that's what you're saying. Exactly. It's, that that is that's going to happen. Um, you know whether whether we spend a couple grand in tarps and just tarp it for a couple of years, well. that would be doable. But if we're talking five to six years, eight years, we're going to need to do a roof. Um, I can tell you, there's a lot of shingles on the ground. So it's uh, we're just on, we're on borrowed time uh, for the roof. As, as in the doors, uh, the doors are in very poor shape. On the back building. On the, yeah, exactly. Or the garage we call it. Um, we'll also need some new front stairs on the main building. But well, you need that anyway, don't you? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We had to uh, actually bump out the back station when we rehabbed the ladder truck. So that yeah. it would fit. Yeah, All right. first because it wouldn't fit. All right. Couldn't bring it up. Uh, I have one quick question for Bonnie. The, the calculations that you have for fitting uh, within the levy limit, does that include a calculation for expected price increases over that period of time? Yes. 
Anything, any other thoughts? I mean, it, to me, it sounds like policy. I don't know a sound financial policy. I don't know, um, you know, where we go from here. I think that, um, you know, I, I didn't, the roof's not falling, and, um, you know, if we don't build it, it doesn't sound like anybody's going to be any less safe in town. And, um, you know, if we put it off, it's financial policy. So I think, uh, do we want to have another discussion another time to further try to make some decision? I mean, and how do we secure that? Can, I mean, it's almost like locking up debt you know, five years from now, can we, what if, you know, it's what if another board wants to do something else, right? It, it's a town meeting authorization. Any, yeah. any um, placement of debt is required. Yeah. Or, right. So even though know, we say we're going to follow this path now, well, two years there could be a different board here and they could take another path. Well, I, I think it's a, it, would, it would be a fairly standard procedure if this board voted to adopt its own policy statement of this, that you want to, you know, that in, in reviewing the, this financial plan, that it's the goal of this board of selectmen that the uh, that a certain timetable be adhered to for the design and construction of the fire station project. I think that's an important starting point. Then you t then you get buy-in from the finance committee to that uh, to mm -hmm. that schedule. I think it will be very important for us to uh, make sure that we're having a macro level discussion with the school committee uh, about how the you know the, the budget pie gets divided up. So they were all in it. So that I mean, we've, um, and I think that that's a legitimate way for, for this board to to take its action. You can't deliver on a vote of a future town meeting until no. you go and get it. But all of the fiscal planning that we do is in a way speculative. It, it's right. this is how we think uh, the the uh, financial affairs of the town should be run. Here are our goals. And having those written policies in place is, you know, you know, is, is an important starting point. So, okay. All right. Why don't we um, put that on for maybe what, the first meeting in February, something I'm like ready that. Ready to we make can, a motion if you'd like. That we adopt this now. Excuse me. We've heard everything. Has anybody got any other questions, concerns? I mean. No, I think I'd just like to see it all written out and something that we can sign or, you know, adopt something formally, so, you know, a policy. That's my only hesitation, just to get it right out there. Okay. Or if you want to say vote this and have them to put, you know, to be followed up in words, and then we can just accept it at that point. Well, I think, I think as, as Keith stated, let's get a vote on the table, and then it gives the finance team along with the finance committee to come back with a definitive well, schedule based on our vote tonight. Well, that's the other thing. Do we want to make a move without talking to schools or finance? Do, you know, do we want to, you know, will that seem to be, you know, There's only so it, much in the levy. Uh, well, I know. That we're talking about. But just some sort of advance notice before we make this policy. I'm just trying to play yep. devil's advocate. Nope. I'm not disagreeing. I just, you know, I didn't think we would do it tonight. I, that doesn't mean we can't. I just thought if we came up with a written policy, we can draft, we can circulate it for, you know, to the other departments to, you know, to finance the school, just to let them know ahead of time. Well, this is a, this is I don't a, know. This is a vote of the board of what we just talked about. I yeah. Mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a affirmation of it's what. A statement of your goal. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the finance committee has been asking you for your budget priorities, and mm -hmm. it seems to me that you just came up with. Uh, maybe your top priority for well, that's fine. All right, it just sounds like something like a, it sounds like a big. It sounds like something big. I didn't expect to do in you know one it's, it's, meeting. It's a it's a it's a policy decision, uh, you know, and we're making a statement yep. to the department heads, the fire chief, and the and the townsfolk that you know what we we've heard the discussion, we've been to all the open houses, we've heard from the townspeople about the fire station, we've heard the financing bit now. Now here's our vote. But don't you think we should make that as part of, part of a comprehensive discussion about the capital priorities and the capital plan? I mean, we've, we're going to hear more about capital priorities as we go through there. And I'm, in all fairness, um, you know, we should look at the whole thing and say, okay, this is, this is what we've decided to do. And, and if we say at that time we'd like to do the fire station, you know, find a way to do the fire station within the levy limit as part of the big picture, you know, uh, then then I would look more to that than just, you know, plucking out a vote right now and and saying, all right, we're going to do the fire station and it's a priority, but I'll make it will be down in the levy limit. In all fairness, uh -huh. making this decision now and making makes the next discussion that much easier. 
My, my concern is that Bonnie's memo from the 5th of December had her option two as the staff recommended option wherein um, there was some inside and some outside and the exposure was only a couple of years of the outside. Um, I see our staff, especially our finance team, as having done an excellent job for years and years. And if they're recommending option number two, I don't feel like we've had a whole lot of discussion relative to option number two so that we can weigh option number three uh, against the, the one that they're recommending. Option number two, uh, the, the staff recommended option, did have the assumption that we would take the debt service that's retiring and put it into capital stabilization and then use that to fund the fire station project as we go along. Mm -hmm. That requires the vote of town meeting to both put it into stabilization and then take it out. So if something happens along the way, you know, that, that might not be the end result. If, if somebody wants to use that capital stabilization funds for, for another project, for example, or if um, something happens, if there's an emergency or something, mm -hmm. something happens and the money needs to be appropriated elsewhere. Um, it also would require, uh, and, and we kind of looked at it almost like a benefit, but um, it would require a ballot vote. Um, and we, we viewed that from a finance staff perspective as getting a sense of the whole town. Um, that, you know, that's a board discussion. So, um, yeah. um, so to do it this way with option number two permits construction to begin earlier and would save us over the course of five and a half years close to $3 million of construction costs, which are estimated to go up. It could, if, if the other votes fell into place, as we recommend. Right. If. So theoretically, this board could adopt a policy to encourage that option number two be seen by the voters as an incremental and thoughtful process in order to have the project happen earlier and to save on millions of dollars of construction costs which are being put off to go with option number three. It is, it is an option that, that can be considered and, and would be viable with the subsequent votes. So it would, is recommended by the financial staff, which has kept our town healthy. Well, what's, what is there a recommendation granted that that's, given that that's dated November 5th, it's January 5th, right? So 5th December 5th. December 5th, and it's January 6th. Is there, in this additional analysis, you and Steve looked into it, is there any further recommendation? Or do you... If, if you want to guarantee that it can be done inside the levy limit with no subsequent votes required, mm -hmm. then, we, then the option that you have before you tonight is the option to take. If we want to do it earlier, Without guaranteeing getting it done because of the then additional votes, then we want to go option two. Which would require debt exclusion. Right. right. And may incur an additional increase outside the levy limit to the taxpayer if everything doesn't line up. In, in each case, how many times does the voter get to weigh in on this between option two and the one we're discussing tonight? Uh, well, three times with, with well with the option tonight twice once nice. for design once for construction you'd need you'd need town meeting votes mm -hmm. two-thirds both of those times right. the other you'd need those plus mm -hmm. whatever program amounts if you're putting aside you know if you're voting to move money into a capital stabilization fund or move it out right. then those are additional votes that would be required and about but but the, right and, and the ballot question um, in in the in the um, option two from the last meeting, the main difference was that and what what we were hearing from the, the discussion that took place on December 16th, you were looking for you, your broadest staff recommendation, which said, well, you know, following our policy in order to take on a big project while we still have outstanding debt, the only way you can do it is with the debt exclusion, and and a way to mitigate. Uh, so number one, you have to have the ballot question. And there are other measures, but there are other measures that could mitigate the actual debt service paid. The, the feedback we got was, well, let's see what, you know, that still requires uh, the debt exclusion. Uh, it would still require taxes to go up. Show us what the option is where that doesn't happen. So we can look at it, kick the tires, see what, uh, see what the uh, ramifications are. And that's what Bonnie's brought tonight. That it's the it's the wait until uh, we have we can pay the debt in 2020. 
so by proceeding with the design in 2016 rather than this year. Mm -hmm. But that also presumes we're not having other major projects happening mm -hmm. in that time frame. Right. We don't I think that's a happen. safe assumption based on what we're hearing tonight. I'm not saying there's nothing going to happen in the total, fi in the total loan of the, that we're paying off the fire station, but there's nothing, there's no, one, there's no competing capital project at this point. Like I said, I hate saying I hate when you guys, I hate when else repeats themselves. We have a numerous projects coming down in the next 10, 15 years or, the, or the, within the time. How long do we finance these for? Um, 20. So we've got a few projects coming down and there's going to be even more coming into the tail end of this project. We can't even foresee right now. Something's going to have to be done outside the levy limit. Right now we have a large, very important project that can be done inside the levy limit. Um, I think waiting is kind of a tough, um, tough bite of the apple to take um, because of the operational um, concessions. But I think waiting to waiting to incur more debt before you until you retire debt is pretty sound. And uh, um, Jim, just the reason I first was surprised at your motion tonight was because I didn't think we'd be ready to take such a, you know, such a big step, you know, tonight. But I think if we discuss it and um, we're ready to make that statement now and then uh, get feedback from. No, I mean, it, it, people are looking for direction from us, and the way they see direction from us is by our stance. Either it's a affirmative or a negative. I mean, mm -hmm. if we uh, want to move forward with this, I mean, don't you think we should at least say move forward? Or, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, I just expected. The, originally, I expected the process to go further. Jen, I'm sorry. So you shaking your head? Are I, you I'm against? I'm concerned are you, about are you, seven percent construction costs increasing over the next five and a half years to attach another close to three million dollars on what is now a six point six million dollar project. So your concern is not doing it through this process. Your, your concern is not doing it by option three. Your process. You're going. You're prefer to do it under option two. My uh, sense is that option two is a better option because it is recommended by the people who look at these numbers day in and day out. Well, but that was given the direction at the time. So given different direction. It was. At the time, there, that was, was, there was no direction on okay. getting, getting it guaranteed inside the levy. It was, Bill, how could we maybe finance this? It, it was, very, it was it, much yeah. looser. Um, you know, while I think option two could be a successful option, it does rely on some variables. Um, I can't control, I can't guarantee, and I, I can't bind a future town meeting to a vote. Even if the intent is to take all debt service reductions and put it towards the fire station project, I can't bind a future town meeting to do that. Um, you know, it, I can recommend it, but I can't bind them. The town meeting will decide. I, I, I guess my response, just to talk this through, is that, it, that you're rolling the dice by doing it option two, and that's not you know, to me, fi sound financial policy. If you're going to take a chance at all these town meeting votes, it's going to be at least two or three to move the money into the, uh, into the, and the, so it's going to be like two or three in, and then probably one out, and then it's going to be you're going to have to also get the override um, option, and you're going to have to get that override, so you have the ability to do it outside. So you're looking at a major two thirds override vote with that moniker on it, override, and then you're looking at two other votes, and then that two or three other votes to get the money into this capital stabilization fund, and then you're looking at this board to keep it in that fund and not use it for something else and then uh, and you move forward. So that's why I disagree with option two. The, the memo from, from December, I wanted to outline the potential opportunities and in looking at all the potentials, yes, that was the option that, that Steve and I looked at and with the other finance staff and, and recommended. With the clarification that if we need to do this inside and only inside and completely inside and guarantee that you know we don't need to rely on future votes, the option tonight is, is the option. The recommendation? Yes. Okay. If, if that's the board's direction. Yeah, right. You can't really give a recommended option. I mean, we give, we give you direction, you give us feedback. There was no direction before, and now we're giving you direction. And, and so it's whether or not we want to do it under the, you right. know, under the levy limit right. or the, not. The, right. The, the policy uh, direction that, that, the, that the board provides is either that we fund it inside the levy limit or outside, and that if it's inside, it's the option that Bonnie's presented tonight. If you would entertain that 
all or a portion of it be done outside, well, then we'd, then we'd be back to the options uh, of the last meeting. So but it's not that we were, the options we were, are out the window, it's just we have to figure out what our priority is. Do we want to do it all inside or do we want to do it partially inside and outside with what I portrayed as rolling the dice? I, I think option two, um, ways that, you know, and that, that, you know the, that's what the recommendation was they came up with. That's did you important. just hear, wait, I'm sorry, but did you just hear what they said? Do you not listen? Because they just said they, they, that's not the recommendation. That's the recommendation if you're going to do it as soon as possible. If they don't get direction from us some other way. Right. They did their analysis. That analysis is still valid. All right, so okay. what's your direction? So I do listen. Now maybe you should listen. Okay, what do you have to say? To, you know, you, you tell me why you like option two, Talking though. about how this is a kinder, gentler boy, and you keep badgering away, and I'm not going to put up with what it. What have I badgered you, sir? So. How have I badgered you? Could you tell me how I've badgered you? If you're going to throw that dice, then tell me how I badgered you. What would you. you do if I said, are you not listening to me? What would you, you'd go, okay. Alex, I demand an apology. All right, so there's one example that maybe I badgered. What else? You say I do it all the time. All right. Get it, throw the dice. So let's the example. finish this discussion. No, you threw that dice down, then I badger you. Give it to me. How do I badger you? You just did. I gave you one, the example. give me something. You say I badger you all the time. You say I continue to and do it. And we're watching the second example so right now. give it to me. How, so you didn't have this example when you made that accusation. So please, didn't have back to. up you your accusation. Can we just move on? No, this is, no, because he's, no, is, he throws these dice wait, out. Wait, he's he's smile on and then he then he, then he, he gets away with it he makes all these accusations and doesn't absolutely. back them up absolutely can't agree with you more mr chair now if you'd like to proceed with i'll give you the option yes, either proceed like on proceed. telling me how you how i badger you or proceed with no, why you I support don't want to proceed with that then please proceed with why you support the second option i think it's the wisest option i think I think the point that was made about millions of dollars in difference is a point that's been proven again and again. The police station went out to be studied. They came up with a price. They said, well, you know, let's do something else. They got a smaller station for more money. The fire station is a classic example of we've been patching that up. We've bump it out here, we bump it out there, we worry about the roof, we put off the work on the building, we do all this stuff where we are running the risk of spending a lot more money. If this is a priority for us, then let's have it be a priority. Uh, I think option two gives us the best chance for going either way with this. If we can work out the scenarios, we can get started on this project, um, and maybe we get it under the levy limit, maybe we don't. But I think we all agree that what we want is a fire station in the end. I, th I think that's true, but in the, I think also the one thing that has to be pointed out too is that Going with the option three, if that's the, the way we choose to go, at least it's a guarantee that that fire station is going to get going to get built without having something that might happen in the future that it gets, gets put off even further and the cost becomes even even higher because if one vote doesn't happen at a town meeting instead of being finished completely in in, in 2019 now like maybe might be talking further down the road so there's no guarantees on that that savings of, of of funds that way. There's no guarantee on any of Right. No, but no, right. at least we, we're pretty much guaranteeing that under the uh, uh, limit there, the, uh, it's going to get built. Well, he, I don't, well, I, I'm not going to jump on that, Robert, but I think, I think option three is the one that guarantees we're not going to raise taxes next year. And, and that, you know, my phone is very busy around this time when those tax bills get mailed out. That's probably the most time I get the majority of the phone calls since I've been in this position. Why? I've Why said, are my bills going up? How come? And I've said from my first year here that you don't, you know, when we do the tax classification hearing, that's when it appears that taxes go up, but it's actually May that taxes go up. So right. if I can do something inside the levy limit that is a better chance that there's going to be um, no tax increase to the residential bills or commercial bills, then that's that's where I'm at. But I don't agree with that statement that's because if we know we're going to have other capital projects and they, we know they're going to cost money. So just because we're saying, yeah, we can get the fire station under the levy limit, that's where we're, we're looking the other way when if we think that we aren't going to be part and parcel to asking for more money for a library or whatever it is outside of the levy limit. 
No. My response to that is the fire the, station we're looking at. I know. My response to that is that I've already discussed that twice, and I've made my point about that, which I believe Bonnie has uh, somewhat supported, and this board has. So I can't. I'm not going to respond to that again because I'll just be beating a dead horse. I agree. So uh, back to my question. Uh, you know, I'll be more than happy to make a motion uh, based on you know uh, my my feeling and my belief. Uh, spend within your means. Um, and if the board so sees so fit to second it, so be it. Vote upon it. I'm okay. Um, but if you, uh, Mr. Chair, I would be more than welcome to, uh, willing to make a motion. No reason to wait for my. All right, here we you. go. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the schedule of design and build the fire station within the tax levy as presented by the finance team. Second. Is there any further discussion? All right, this motion has been made and seconded to uh, accept the scheduling plan uh, to, for the fire station funding uh, in uh, May 2016, which is uh, within the, the levy limit um, with, I imagine, after this motion, it will all be put into a better schedule and put into a policy. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Aye. Abstain? All right. All right. Thank you very much for the uh, for the uh, debate. We'll now move on to the uh, capital improvement plan, which we're moving on first with uh, Jimmy, Mr. Clyde from Highway. What do you want to know? Well, we talked about it a little bit. What we're really trying to do here is uh, we've asked other departments for uh, prioritization of their. Um, of their capital request and I know this list is prioritized we're trying to now get a better idea of what's required um, for instance some of the departments have uh, items that they're already committed um, so those are required and then there's some that are optionally operational required and we're just trying to get a better idea from you what can you, what is the equipment that you must have what would be uh, good to have and what might be nice to have that kind of idea there Bonnie asked me to send you a, a breakdown of that, and I, I did. I'm assuming you got that. Yeah. Um, nothing for us is uh, guaranteed or required by law. I mean, it's all we're a business that's trying to survive like everyone else, mm -hmm. and we're not going away. And equipment makes our life easy. That's why we want it and need it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for us going down through the first four items, the major equipment, which gets us through um, just when we have unforeseen expenses on things, uh, <clears throat> we bid items or get pricing on items a year in advance, and sometimes the pricing isn't exact, so we need a little extra funds for that. Um, like this year, you get into a heavy winter, you, you abuse the equipment a little bit more, you need some extra money to fix things. The next thing is our one-ton dump truck. It's a scheduled replacement that we've had. We try to keep our equipment, um, the one tons between eight and 10 years, depending on how things go. This one's scheduled to be replaced. Uh, the next thing is the front deck mower. Um, it's just basically a scheduled replacement. We try to, again, keep as long as we can. And uh, we do move them around because we say, oh, it's really not that bad. We can keep it another year. But then it gets to a point where it's, you're putting a lot of money into it, it's not reliable, and we need to rely on them. The next thing is the the infill groom. We, we've had a fair amount of problems with it this year, and we rely on that heavily to, to reduce our workload because we're prepping ball fields all the time, and if we have to go back to hand rake in the fields, it just doesn't work, and it's not going to get done. So it's pretty important, and then you start going down to the other things, and they're you know, basically nice to have, and we're just trying to improve our equipment. Well, I've seen crack ceiling as must have as well. Yeah, that's there's been a little discussion going back and forth. This, it, it's it's really in the uh, road maintenance budget. I, I'm not really sure. It's it's just something that gets we, put in here for discussion purposes. We break it out because it's something that's been um, asked repeatedly in, in previous years. You know, how much do we spend? Do we plan for this every year? We do budget $70,000 every year within the roadway budget. Um, we're just culling it out here to show you the amount that we spend on crack sailing. It's a recurring expense, so it's not. So it's always oh, not for equipment. It's for? The actual crack sailing, yeah. the, the service. 
Um, so it, it is funded in the roadway budget. Um, it's here because it's something that we do annually and not doing it would be a problem um, for the ongoing maintenance of the roads. Um, but it is covered under the roadway budget, so it's not a, an additional amount. Okay, so it's not in the capital plan that you have. If you okay. look at your capital plan, oh, okay. Plan so this is this is all. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's not. That, this is not. It's part of the capital budget. plan. Okay. All right. So. I mean, you you make it too easy sometimes, too. We just draw a line at the groomer. I mean, it's nothing. All the other stuff is really just not. It's operational. I mean, when I, when I hear you talk about the infill groomer, you're talking about doing something with equipment rather than doing it with people. And then these other things don't have the same type of labor impacts. No, I mean, like, we, we currently have a roller. We're trying to upgrade it to a, a newer model that does a better job. Um, I mean, if the funding isn't there, it's not there. I mean, we're asking for it. Um, you know, we've put a 10-year plan together. If you look out 10 years, it's out there. We do change it by priorities change over time. I mean, we're looking at a crystal ball 10 years from now, too. Um, you know, newer technology comes in. You know, you said draw a line. Yeah, I, right. I mean, no. I can't say I have to have it. It's yeah. something that we would like to have, and it would do a better job for us. Okay. No, I appreciate the honesty. Does this at some point become a must-have? It will once the other one's so yeah. old that it doesn't work, like our old one that we had, you know, years ago. Okay. It's just newer technology just yeah. does a better job. And then you go into the, you know, you guys want to improve sidewalks, you need a paver. Mm -hmm. You don't want to buy it, we want to improve the sidewalks. It's pretty simple. <coughs> Anybody else? I've been kind of talking a lot. Uh, with respect to major equipment repair, I see that that's on your budget uh, fires, not on police. Is there a um, reason why something like that's not in the operational budget? Um, the police is specific to tires and vehicle maintenance, so there is an account. It's a smaller amount. It's oh, okay. five or six thousand dollars. <coughs> yep. That is the vehicle maintenance that they use, and they do have an amount within their budget also. But we earmark the tire replacement because that's sure. kind of a, a critical um, component. And on the major equipment and repairs for for highway and for fire, they have larger and more apparatus that needs to be maintained. Which are one-time fixes. Well, and, and they're they're larger. I mean, when the you know, when the transmission goes on one of the the larger trucks, it's it's a big issue. Um, this account can only be used for those types of things. Whereas if it's put into the operating budget, it can be spent. Right. You we know, talked about that last time. If yeah. something else comes up. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Anybody else? I just want comment about the sidewalk paper because I know you mentioned that this boy has talked about it and people talk to me about sidewalks all the time. I I would suggest that we if we draw a line that we also include that sidewalk paper. <coughs> but that's my opinion. Well I think what we can do is we can at least move it up there and we can say move it up we can move it ourselves up above the the roller and the forklift and then see what's left, I think. I, I think that's your kind of point. If you want, you know, we can Try to make it a nice to have and so what we have that. I mean yeah. you ask us to put it on a ten year plan and we only look at one year. Yeah. You know, like you we bought our Mac trucks, we told you we'd keep them twenty years and now we have to keep them thirty years. Try yeah. to keep stuff inside the levy limit, you know? I mean then don't there's only, there's only so much fire station then let me get a couple of trucks. <laughs> You know, I mean, again, we're well, we're a business. Down with, down with you. We're a business that's trying to survive, and and if if you're a private business, you, you make the decision to keep a piece of equipment, and then if it's not working out, you know, you say, oh, okay, I got to go out and, and and buy that. We're a year to two years out if, if something like that happens to us. So we're, you know, we're trying to do what we can, and I think everyone does a great job at that, but. You know, we're looking at the tercentennial. We're not going away. No, and, and you know I've been on the yard a couple times. I looked at the yeah. equipment, and I think you do a great job with that. And, I mean, compared to you, I'm, I'm a blow-in, and I'm, you know, now, you know, check in your work. You've been here. You've been working here longer than I've been here, and I think, um, you know, I'm just doing the best I can with the money that we have 
and I'm trying to I'm trying to do an, another step here. I don't think we've really gone this in depth into the cap plan as before, and really listened to you and really and the other departments to try and get this done. So I, I'm just here trying to do the best I can with with the money that the town has, you know. So. You know, I, I think uh, it's reasonable, yeah. Mr. Chair, excuse me, yeah. that, you know, Jim, yeah, eventually you are going to need some new trucks. Yeah. I mean, you've been fantastic coming up with the ideas to do the refurbish and, and to get the extra years, but you're absolutely correct in saying, you know what, we're going to need new trucks and it's going to be within the next five years, ten years, or whatever, whatever you deem necessary. So the town's got to be prepared for it. And I think that's when the decision by this board will have to be made, you know, is it going to be a command vehicle for the police or a truck for the debar uh, highway department? Is it going to be a uh, uh, something with the schools or is it going to be a sander for the highway department? So uh, those are decisions that are absolutely have to be made. And when you bring them forward, you, you fight for them too. And I think that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at all the, the three departments that are under our direction to so that we can say, hey, well, you know, does, does Jimmy's truck go higher than this or the side where paper higher than, you know, turnout gear, whatever, you know, things like that. So just to throw terms out there, not saying I'm cutting out turnout gear. But so, so. Um, Joe asked about the sidewalk paper and moving it up. What are your thoughts on that? In other words, I'm assuming these are in a list of priorities. Yeah, that, that's how they were put in there. It's, um, again, the sidewalks are in pretty poor condition. It's it's one of your goals to improve the condition, and that's one of the things that would help it. You know, something like that lasts for quite a few years. Um, you know, you can try and rent one or something, but I mean, purchasing it just makes more sense. Jim, if you were to get everything you had in that list, what is your... Is that 217,000? Is that money? Um, Two, yeah, this year. So two seven. Let's take a two seven two. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Anything else? Any other questions for Jim? Well, Alex had, had uh, emailed a couple questions um, over the weekend just about how many small dump trucks we had. Uh, I was just curious to where you were going with trying to... I, I was just trying to figure out what that smaller segment of the fleet looked like and what its age was and, you know, if, if, if rolling, if waiting a year was going to have a kickback effect down the road because of the size of the fleet and you know you'd be putting these things off too far it's just trying to get a better understanding and I do appreciate your answers and you know, you know when I send out an email on the in the weekend I don't necessarily expect everybody to respond in the weekend but that's when I have my time to read my package so um, so what I what I'd asked Jim is is uh, what how many of the of the uh, one ton uh, type or size vehicles there were in the fleet and I asked a little bit about whether you know they were sharing or if it was seasonal and and, and stuff like that and you know you pretty much convinced me that you know it's not something that that could there were a lot of alternatives to do it okay Good. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. All right. Uh, moving on to uh, fire. Do you want to run down your uh, request? We'll, we'll run <coughs> down. Um, it's fifteen thousand in the major equipment, as Bonnie touched on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's for significant repairs of, uh, of our equipment. We have a few pieces of apparatus that are getting uh, quite old. Our engine too, and uh, our ladder. Our ladder is going to be thirty years old and uh, next year, two years. Um, so, I mean, and even some of the um, pump malfunctions that happen in between any of the apparatus, it's a significant cost about that. So that's what they made the major equipments for. Um, the modular uh, building, the 6,000 a year, that will remain until 
a station is built that's housing our, uh, our around the clock staff. Um, UHF radio system, the uh, $35,000 for that, um, that's actually a, a, a two-part thing. This is, this is the final portion of the radio upgrade from us going to the VHF, to the, to the uh, UHF uh, band, uh, replacing um, the first part last year. We replaced all of the, the base stations, um, basically doing the infrastructure. This portion will replace the uh, portable radios and pagers. Um, and also in, what was it, Bonnie, back in 10, there was $40,000 set aside for matching grant money. Um, also in the spring, that money that was set aside will be reallocated to um, uh, match up with this. Finishing the project. Um, to finish the project, right. Um, protective clothing, the $12,000. Uh, we're trying to get that into a, uh, a yearly reoccurrence so that we can maintain the um, replacement of the gear as the department grows. Uh, there is a shelf life on gear, and uh, if we can get into a, a decent rotation of replacement, we won't have to uh, come up for large chunks of money, say, you know, $150,000 every eight years. Uh, so if we can get on that rotation, and that's, that's our goal on that. Uh, number five is replace uh, car nine, um, my vehicle, uh, with a um, the thirty-four thousand four hundred thirty dollars for uh, Ford Interceptor. It's basically the same vehicle that the police uh, will be getting. We're looking at two of those. That's number five and six um, for command vehicles. Um, sorry, I'll, I'll let me back up. To replace mine, uh, currently it's experiencing mechanical issues, transmission issues. Um, our mechanic from um, Miller Automotive, they, it was their recommendation that we uh, look forward at replacing that um, simply for the uh, cost of the repairs exceeds the value of the vehicle. How many miles are on that now? Uh, just over 68,000. Um, five years old, 68,000 miles, and it's falling apart, and we're going to buy more of the same? Uh, it's a different vehicle, and um, it has different operators. What does that mean? You drive more <laughs> gently, or you drive more, more roughly? <laughs> Be beating around the bush uh, definitely would maintain the, the, the vehicle, and uh, without you know throwing anybody under the bus, yeah, yes, we would. And, and that one maintained. Been in and that one's <laughs> been in two accidents. Yeah, that vehicle has been in two accidents and repaired, and um, it, it's been. And these are hard miles too. I mean, not they to are. not to take away from uh, Jenna's point. These, I mean, this, you're not going out on the highway and, that, and you know driving a lot. This is all around town, starts and stops, and Those, getting that, to scenes. That vehicle, I mean, that was coming from another town. Um, yeah, it, it was it was rough. So this it was, was purchased miles. used by no, us. No, that was, oh. was purchased new yeah. when um, the first one uh, was in an accident. This yeah. one was replaced. Um, yeah. <laughs> this one was also in uh, multiple accidents. Um, it's been repaired. Um, this vehicle's beat. Point blank. <laughs> okay, I'll upgrade that one. Um, number six was is the the deputy's vehicle. Um, same vehicle. Um, it's the Ford Interceptor. It's it's basically a, it's it's a lower vehicle. It's a step down from Explorer. It's a little more affordable. Um, Currently, he's using one of the pickup trucks, and um, if we could actually, we're, the goal is to get the pickup truck back into the fleet um, for use. Um, it's part of our fleet reduction plan. I say reduction, yes, we're looking at increasing it by a number. However, um, we're shrinking down the value of the vehicles. Um, what, if I kind of jump forward a little bit, um, we're looking at replacing our brush truck, which is a $250,000 vehicle. Um, by allowing us to put this pickup truck, you know, a $40,000 vehicle back into the fleet and putting a small skid unit, uh, which is basically a brush, uh, contains water for brush fires, a small tank, small pump. Um, we can operate much more efficiently, uh, more affordable on fuel usage. Um, it's much easier to maintain a pickup truck that gets better mileage instead of a $250,000 brush truck that gets used eight or nine times a year at four or five miles a gallon. Um, so it's definitely easier, easier to maintain multiple, uh, multi-use vehicle. 
Um, we can be used throughout the year. Different. Uh, take that tank out in the uh, in the winter. Use it for multi-purpose to, throughout the winter. Um, there's, so. there's a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar. What you call it? Brush. Brush truck. Our truck. Yeah. Engine three. Is, uh, okay. And that's the cheapest of our. And is that is that going to be able to be sold? Yes. In the used market. Um, what. Uh, in speaking with the, the dealers, the best option for that would be to uh, actually auction it off. Um, and the the market right now, uh, especially up north, um, they anticipate the the range between twenty five and thirty five thousand for its value. Um, so if I uh, so then based on that, it'll pay for one of the vehicles, one of the command vehicles. Yeah. Um, in conjunction with the uh, turning that pickup truck back into a brush truck and uh, with a small skid unit, um, and look at number seven, and that is uh, $30,000 for an ATV. We're looking at a six wheel ATV, which also would get a small um, tank on the back of it, a small skid unit similar to what would be going into the pickup truck, just a smaller version, small pump. Uh, water, a foam component. This is a six-wheel ATV that would be able to take out into Oak Hill. Um, the power lines, the multiple con uh, conservation land uh, areas throughout, throughout town, and we can be able to use that for uh, rescues. Of uh, I mean, throughout the year, people break their ankles or get hurt out in the woods, and instead of having six or eight guys have to hoof somebody out. A half mile, we could actually have a vehicle that would uh, be able to go in to, you know, make that rescue much easier. It would also be available to the PD um, if they had something going on out in the woods or search anything like that. Um, so it would be a multi-use vehicle. Um, and uh, number eight is actually the skid unit. That's the skid unit that would be going into the uh, into the pickup truck for ten grand. That's that's what it would uh, cost us for that. Um, our last unit is fifteen thousand dollars for thermal imagers. Um, that's uh, you know it would be a nicety. We we have three thermal imagers now. They are still working. Um, technology is improving. Uh, cost is coming down. So this is uh, an item that uh, the camera cameras are old. It would be nice to replace them. Um, but if uh, we don't have that opportunity. They're still functionable and, and still working. Um, this is also something that, you know, at the end of the year, if we actually had some leftover operational funds, we could, you know, maybe channel a little bit of it towards and, and replace one camera or something like that uh, if we had to. Any So what's the total net? I mean, you're, so you're saying get the command vehicle, the second command vehicle, the 34, and get the brush unit, brush skid unit for 10,000, and you can get rid of engine three at that point, or do you need the ATV to get rid of engine three? Correct, you need the ATV. The ATV and the pickup truck with the skid units, it's kind of a, a package thing. Yeah. It's two smaller, two smaller units, get rid of the more expensive brush truck, um, multifunctional, last a long time, uh, definitely cheaper to operate. Um, it's basically our first step at, at a reduction program uh, for more affordable, uh, easier to maintain vehicles. How big is the ATV? Just because I don't know what it really looks like. Um, it's a it's a six wheel uh, six wheel machine. It's um, four feet wide by. Six Six feet long. Uh, like a gator? Exactly, exactly. Slight, slightly bigger. Yeah. So it comes flat in the back and you put the. It comes on a trailer. It has a dump bed on the back so that we could actually put a small skid tank, um, a, a skid tank, a little pump with it, and on the side of it, it comes with a med bed. So it actually has a stretcher on it. No, just going back to these combinations that you have out here. So can you replace engine three with the ATV and the brush skid unit and not the command vehicle? Um, no. Then, then, so part of the problem, if I was 
to take the command vehicle away um, and only have myself. Um, currently, we both operate 24-7, um, 365. And the vehicles that we take home, we respond to calls on nights and weekends to back up the day staff. Currently, there's only two in quarters. So they'll take that first piece of apparatus out, and we will together arrive simultaneously on a call so that we can qualify as a four-person crew yeah. to begin an attack on a fire or begin you know, some extrication at, a, at an accident while we're waiting for the call department to arrive with additional uh, support personnel and apparatus. So by eliminating one of those command vehicles, um, it, specifically that pickup truck and not having requiring him to respond to the station to get a vehicle to respond just um, basically adds a significant delay. No, but the deputy has a vehicle that he responds to now. Is that what you're saying? Correct, but that vehicle is the pickup truck that would get that skid tank in it. Oh. Uh, so my comment about it paying for the truck is uh, just been washed out by the skid in the ATV. Okay. The, the, the sale of well, the, the sale of right. Engine 3 could potentially pay for the, the ATV right. and yeah, exactly. that, that package. Yeah, that yeah. deputy gets a, a, a another Correct. vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, going back to um, highway department looking to buy refurbished, why do you need brand new? Such as? Such as your brand new vehicle you're suggesting the town buy for you and for your deputy chief? We make are required to see if we can get the most out of our vehicles and make them last until, you know, the longest we can. Um, if we, you know, go new, we're guaranteed. Um, it's an emergency response vehicle. I have there's a reliability portion in there about having it something that's you know new and uh, in good shape. Jim, let's go. Jim, um, municipalities get a pretty good discount when they purchase new. Because we can buy things a lot cheaper than the general public. Like we were looking to potentially get a used backhoe or something like that, mm -hmm. and we can buy them new cheaper than you can buy them used um, from a dealership. So this you have to come off the state bid list. Yes, <coughs> correct. And if you were buy used, you'd be subject to a dealer. Thank you, Correct. Yeah. All right, Bonnie. Do you have something? Um, the other item is uh, generally the warranties are better. Um, we can negotiate better warranties on mm -hmm. the vehicle. Then why such a big vehicle? Why not something like an Escort? I'm not going to get it anywhere an Escort. It's three feet of snow. <laughs> no, I see, I, yeah, I've asked a question. I've been trying to uh, downsize town vehicles. I think we've done it a couple times. So, I think, you know, there's places that you can and you can. That, that vehicle, that Interceptor, is actually... Currently, I have an Expedition. And there's an Explorer, and this Interceptor is even smaller than that. So um, this is a significant... Uh, reduction in size and cost. And this is the smallest, least expensive all-wheel or four-wheel drive vehicle that's made by Ford? Yeah. Have you looked at other makers? This vehicles? is the vehicle that has the size that will equip, um, that will hold the equipment that we need that's required for the job. And on the bid list? Yes. So there's no other smaller vehicles on the bid list? Uh, there are smaller vehicles on the bid list, but they that will, will not do, meet our needs. That will do, yeah, that is, okay. Correct. So I just want to make clarification now, that you're also restricted somewhat in mo make and model by staying on the bid list. Correct. All right. I just need that clarification. Go ahead. Okay. So I guess what I'm seeing, it's, it's almost all or none. Well, in order, to, in order to do your fleet reduction and replace Engine 3, you need the the skid, the ATV, and the command vehicle. Well, hopefully the skid and the ATV will be canceled by engine three sale. So basically, the the deputy's vehicle for 34 would, you know, take off the um, skid and the ATV because that'll be paid for by the sale of engine three. And what comes, what happens with That's the, the auction? The about. auction <laughs> item. <laughs> <laughs> the auction item. Does that go back oh, into general fund, you know. free cash? No, Where's that going to? Actually, set up a, a revolving account for auction items for police vehicles. We could do the same for this instance for the fire vehicles, and then use it to purchase the new equipment so that. It okay, so we can directly offset. So all right. So we're we understanding that we buy things out of the general fund, and then we get something sold, and it comes back in, and that cash. Then we still have. Would we basically have 
additional capital money to spend this year? If the results of the auction were, you know, more than the twenty-five thousand, then it, we could we could redirect that for equipment next year, or we could just bring in whatever the auction results were to the general fund. Um, either way, we could we could earmark it to offset the cost. So there there is a mechanism. But again, you can't spend that money before you have it. So you can't. No. You, so we still have to budget for the full capital request, and then we get the money back, and maybe we use it for. But when, then when we offset it, so the money's available somewhere well, else. For so an example, with the police um, vehicles, one year we held an auction and we had over 25000 um, mm -hmm. as a result of the auction. And the next year in the capital plan, we took that 25000 and used it to offset one of the police vehicles that was purchased. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we did directly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I, think, um, I think that's all good. Does anyone else have anything? Because um, I don't think we're going to make decisions tonight. I think we have to take our priorities and look at the whole town priorities at some point. But we wanted to get an idea of that. Okay. If there's no nothing further, Deputy Chief King. Um, first off, I'd like to do a little bit of history reminder on on cruisers. Last year, uh, we did not purchase any cruisers because we were uh, under the direction of the finance committee and the finance team. Here, we were uh, trying to get away from uh, leasing or purchasing cruisers on financing. So there was two reasons for that last year. One was to get rid of, pay off all the rest of the leases so that all the leases were done on the cars and everything we now own. It was also a change over a year for Ford, Chevy, and Dodge where a, a complete redo of the car was going to come, was coming on all, all the uh, manufacturers were doing this. So nothing that was in the current cars we own was going to fit in one of the new cars we bought. Um, if I bought new cars last year and put anything in them, none of that equipment would fit into the new cars I purchased this year. So that being said, uh, but, uh, originally this year we were scheduled for three fully marked cruisers and one unmarked cruiser. Uh, and looking at the plan, I brought that down to two, two fully marked cars, and uh, my plan is to uh, bring the fleet to uh, four working marked cruisers with two held in reserve. Currently we run five fully marked cruisers and one in reserve. The reserve car is uh, used to transport to court for, uh, for other functions. By doing this, we're now going to turn the cars over every two years and keep them under warranty. Two of the Dodges that I currently have on the road have been down for over combined almost two and a half months just since July 1 this year in repairs alone. My repair budget is already at, at almost uh, 85 to 90, or I think it was at 90% as of today. On, on the Dodges and um, the Fords just hold up better, plain and simple. I'm going back to Ford. I uh, wish I never left Ford, to be, to be quite honest with you. Uh, our Crown Vic uh, does not have the draw on, uh, on resources and the utilities. Uh, while we've only had the, uh, the Ford Interceptor utility for a year now, uh, its draw has been great, and I've talked to the other departments that have had them for a year. Uh, Acton has had them for a year longer than us. And they're finding the same thing that the, the Ford uh, maintenance program, um, you know, as long as you keep up with the maintenance, uh, is is better. So, so we brought that down to two cars rather than the three original Mark cars that we were going to purchase this year, and that's with full equipment. That's um, everything: new cages, new light bars, everything that uh, is needed to set up the car, um, new prisoner prisoner transports, uh, the uh, the drawers for the rear and the whole, uh, uh, so that gets the car fully set up. And then there's the unmarked uh, Ford uh, Interceptor, which keeps us in the, uh, uh, originally that was scheduled for this year to be, uh, to be replaced, replaces, it goes into the, as we call it, the hand-me-down. So what would happen is the uh, chief vehicle would go down into the detectives, and the uh, detectives forerunner uh, would actually, uh, which has got 136,000 miles on it as of today, um, would actually be uh, would be rotated out of the fleet. Cars that go into the uh, unmarked fleet tend to last seven to eight years on our raw package. Uh, so far, the uh, the one that's been tested the longest is the uh, Ford Crown Vic, which is the uh, 2000 and 2006, which is uh, was bought brand new in the uh, unmarked package and is still running and is not scheduled for replacement for another two years actually. Um, so what would happen is this year is three cars. Next year is two cars, the year after is three cars, and then it goes to two cars for like two or three years. 
until the until the kickovers hit again of the eight or nine years, or depending on mechanics, obviously of the unmarked fleet. Um, snow tires and tires that uh, was under capital. I was directed to put that under capital three years ago. It's been strictly on tires. Typical, uh, the uh, regular cruisers run one set of snow tires every year, and, and typically at least two sets of regular tires every year. That's what they go for about three sets of tires. And it, uh, we do get them at the staff the state bid list. Their tires are normally $180 on the state bid list. They're 100. And, well, they're up to about $120 a tire right now. So that's why they increased to $6,000 for snow tires. As you see, anything below that line um, came off the uh, uh, came off the list. Uh, doesn't affect department operations. However, the Cybercom Public Safety Radio Maintenance Agreement, they're for ten thousand one hundred and four dollars. That protects about a one million dollar infrastructure of the town, which is all the radio systems for police, fire, highway. It uh, protects the uh, the UHF systems, and uh, so that uh, if we have any. Radio issues gives us much, you know, a greatly discounted price. Um, we are going on our uh, our third or fourth year now after building the station. We haven't had any major equipment yet, but uh, you know, you never can tell. And it does protect about a one million dollar infrastructure. <coughs> uh, the cable TV and security system maintenance agreements for eleven thousand dollars. My uh, after talking with Bonnie, my uh, uh, recommendation there would be if you were to fund that, is not to fund the maintenance agreement. However, to take the $11,000 and put it in the capital as $11,000 to be spent if there are needs. The system only is, is, is protecting about a $160,000 system. I think that $11,000 to protect $160,000 is excessive for a maintenance agreement. Um, personally, we, uh, we discussed that and it would be better spent uh, to have it in a capital. Again, it can only be spent to protect that system, but I don't think, uh, I think, I think you know, almost 10% of a system's cost for a maintenance agreement is, is rather high when you're protecting almost a million dollars for that same $10,000 uh, price uh, for the radio system. And uh, basically everything else, uh, the conference uh, came forward, uh, I believe, just by a mistake. Uh, painting we'll do with uh, with inside the infrastructure and get some uh, prisoners from Mr. Carr. And uh, as far <laughs> as you don't have your own, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't, they don't like to stay too long with us. <laughs> and uh, anything else uh, would would uh, go forward under uh, under our frontline budget, not under capital. So, so if I may, Mr. Yes. Chair, the uh, so the eleven thousand is basically if a camera goes down. Keep it in capital, replace that camera. Correct, okay. correct. I just think, you know, for $160,000 total system purchase, $11,000 compared to that million is, is rather high. But uh, that was what uh, Bonnie and I had uh, recommended. What if we don't do the cyber communication maintenance agreement? What happens if we don't do that? Or what um, could happen? Well, again, if, if it's a, both of them are a roll of the dice things. If you, if you don't, if something goes down, we have to find a way to pay for it. I mean, that's. If, uh, if we lose a frontline radio and uh, it's uh, it's a hundred thousand dollar repair, we have to uh, have to figure out to uh, how to you know how to pay for that uh, that system. This protects us. It's one percent of the value of what you're protecting. Correct. That's why I thought when I saw the the cable TV and in, uh, in security that doesn't make any sense to me. It's just it's too you know the the price is not doesn't make any sense. Mail. I only have one comment, Mr. Chair. Uh, at our last discussion, um, I had made the suggestion of uh, having the um, fire station um, design come out of the capital budget um, for the 600 in excess of 600,000. I know there was a lot of, you know, we're going to cut the capital budget in half and. Um, what I'd like to make a recommendation to this board is possibly set $100,000 aside in the capital budget for that project, okay? So that as in we go to the um, uh, town meeting, there's a line specifically for the design for 100000 for the um, fire station out of the 1.2 or close to $1.2 million. I don't think that um, it's going to be a huge impact. Uh, it's still 1.1 million going towards capital for the town. 
uh, it was every little, every dime counts in my eyes. Every dime counts. So, um, and I'd also suggest that any retired debt here on in um, be focused in towards the uh, fire uh, station project also for the design. Yeah. And again, it's just the more we can save a hundred thousand dollars this year, a hundred thousand dollars next year, the three hundred thousand that. Uh, possibly by the time the design kicks up in uh, 16, we don't have to borrow that. Yeah. So, well, we'll keep that in mind. I think where we go from from here is to, um, and, and I, I drastically cut the 600 thousand down that I asked for. I um, I think where we go from here is we have our our priorities from uh, the departments that uh, that report to us, and I appreciate that. I think it's exactly what I had wanted to see, so that we can look at this in a in a meaningful manner. We're not on the we're not in the trucks and in the uh, buildings every day, so it's nice to have this. Um, I think now we have to take this information with the same request that we got from the other departments that we made to the other departments and just come up with a recommendation for the cap plan for the, the uh, to finance. Any uh, update on the other departments reporting back in a similar manner? Um, we can schedule uh, other departments for you your meeting on either next Monday night or and or the following. Well, again, where I was at with that is I think that we just need to take those and part of it. I don't want the school thinking they report to us. I think we I just want their prioritization so that we can get one thing. We we need we need to set these priorities for these departments. And yeah, I mean we have, but we have other, you, there are other general government departments though IT, uh, uh, library, yeah, yeah, facilities. Yeah, facilities. PMBC is uh, scheduled to come in on the twenty seventh to okay. present. Their stuff, uh, we're, uh, this, uh, I don't think it's on the agenda, but this Thursday night, uh, we're, board's jointly meeting with the planning board who has requested $100,000 for updating the master plan. So there, there, there are still a, a lot of things that we need to review mm -hmm. in the capital plan. Okay. All right. And we can be bringing that forward in future meetings. Okay. Anything else? Make a motion to adjourn. Uh, I'd just like to, before we do that, thank everybody for coming out for an extra night. Um, I know it's uh, not that big of a burden, but I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time for uh, an extra meeting. Very good. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any score in the football game? Hey, I want to hear it. I want to hear it.